So the sun is completely blowing my face off. Um, today we're going to have a fun video with this truck. Oh crap. So today we're going to change the engine oil on this 302. I haven't changed it since last year. And now that I've actually been driving it properly and got the carburetor and everything all figured out, I'm going to go ahead and change it. Um, I actually didn't change it even after putting the new carburetor and intake on. So yeah, and I've been driving it like that for the whole year. Anyways, I want to change the engine oil. And because I'm not going to get to the five speed swap until probably next summer or the end of next spring. Um, which I've already started collecting parts, so it's going to happen. The five speed swap is going to happen. Um, uh, I want to help this AOD out a little bit. I want to change the fluid. I just need it to last, you know, one more year and, you know, that's it. So I've got a filter. I've got oil. Um, let's change it. Let's see what uh, let's see what we got in the oil pan there. I know uh, for a little bit it seemed like I didn't have overdrive, but I have all my forward gears. I've got reverse. It's a little slow on the shifting, so I want to see if maybe a, a fluid change and a new filter will help out. So, anyways, I'm gonna get her fired up and we'll drive on. noise next door landlord is uh, doing some work uh, so we'll have a little bit of noise in the video when do we not have noise in the video got a new oil filter for the transmission pan gasket down here got the oil filter for the motor the engine I got some uh, snake oil to put in there. And we're gonna run 1030 diesel engine oil because we got a flat tap at cam in there. Or at least I assume so. And then I wanted to get Mercon 5 in jugs, but they don't really have that. They only have it in bottles. So what I did is I went with this fluid right here. And this is for Ford vehicles 83 to 96 that require the Mercon stuff. So we're just gonna run that. Hey, it's better than no fluid. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get under there and we're gonna change the engine oil. And then after that, get that done with, we'll um, move on to draining the transmission fluid and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that, which um, I need to clean out my tool for that. So yeah, be back with you guys here in a few minutes. Oh, haven't been under here in a minute. I clean this thing out so we can see if there's any metal in there. So I got the biggest crescent wrench that I own. <clears throat> you know, this is some good content. Most people don't show you this part. This is like a pornographic. Just, you just barely caught it. Now for the filter. I'm gonna pour a little bit of oil in and then I'm gonna pour this into the bottle or the jug. Drink up, buttercup. So I'll let that sit like that for a little bit. Mm. 
Fresh oil. Fresh oil. We got some snake oil in here. Actually, I used this Hyperlube on a uh, Toyota Camry that I rebuilt, or the engine that I rebuilt. And um, I'd say it helped in with the break in. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that thing's still on the road. We did that a couple years ago. Rebuilt the engine using a junkyard engine and some new parts here and there. Well, I'm pretty sure it'll be full of oil, so you can just go ahead and put that in there. This thing takes about six quarts, so I'm gonna live with six quarts. Okay, so I've got one of those cheap Amazon $60 fluid extractors. What I'll do is stick this all the way down in there till we. Well, that should be good, actually. Yeah, I had to take this thing apart and clean it a little bit. I had a little bit of a leak and it wasn't making vacuum. So, oh, this tool's working pretty good. Yeah, it fluid's a little dark. All right. Here's what we're looking like. Pan's pretty much empty. Uh, I am going to take the inspection cover off and we're going to drain the torque converter also. Um, I've got to jack the back on the bumper. Uh, lifting this up in the back just a little bit. We're going to use the other floor jack to lift up on the transmission right here. Because uh, we're going to do these bolts here, or screws rather, and hopefully that will give us some room to get maybe a wobbly in there and get these, uh, get the pan bolts here loose, and then uh, get this pan out of here. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. It's mostly just got oil on it. I don't know if the oil is coming from that drain plug that seeps a little bit but we could have a rear main seal so that's one thing we're going to change when we do the uh, five speed swap on this so yeah um, this should be a 19 nope that's 18 here we go I can't believe I worked on stuff without power tools. So we'll set those aside there. I'll get the jack and lift here. I'll probably put some wood under here and hopefully that'll give us enough room to get in here because I really don't want to have to deal with this cross member. I've got all the bolts or the screws out. Except for two at the back here. Got some gasket material right there. Yeah, lifting it up is definitely the trick. Now the pan is not that bad. We'll look at that here in a moment. Um, yeah, it's... I'll show you the pan here in a moment. There's a tiny bit, but I've, I've had worse. Ford Explorer transmission comes to mind. There's the filter. We're about ready to take that off. That's got a couple of 8 mil screws. I think this is the one here. If you tighten down too much, it uh, messes with your fourth gear. Hmm. Not too bad. I was considering having this converted to four wheel drive, but I really have had a sort of a craving in the last 10, 15 years to have a V8 with a five speed behind it. There's just something about it that uh, really is appeasing to me. So it's really not too bad. gasket material I 
I was expecting much worse. Um, you know, usually when you know it's pretty well toast, there's, this is just coated in gray sludge, which is just all your clutch material. Uh, good to know. Two short ones there. Looks like they're all the same. Okay, we definitely don't want to forget that little gasket right there. I was wrong about this one. I think it's one of these two here. So one of these two, if you tighten it down, this is with your overdrive. So what we'll do is I'll just run them until they just touch. Well, the fluid doesn't smell too bad. It actually smells kind of, just smells like it's used. It doesn't smell burnt or anything. So I don't think I heard this transmission. I did tow this home with the drive shaft connected. And I drove this probably about five miles with the throttle valve cable disconnected. Whoops. Well, let's go. I'll go clean the pan and get that ready and we'll get it up in there and then we'll start. Uh, I'll get that access cover off and I want to try and find the drain plug for the torque converter and drain it out. Get out, get whatever I can out of it. Right. Okay, so I got the oil pan back in for the transmission. New gasket, clean all the screws and stuff. Clean both mating surfaces, so should we get to go there? Our transmission just drop back down on the cross member. And then um, I've got the uh, the nuts back reinstalled. So now we're ready to f put fluid in. This is pretty much what we took out. That's probably gonna be about two gallons, I'm guessing. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, I'll probably get a, take one of my gallon jugs, empty ones there. I'll fill it up and if we get two gallons then we'll just start with uh, a couple gallons there and I should have her topped off. I'm going to get this thing off the stands, get it, all my tools put away and then we'll get this back on the ground and then we'll uh, fill her up with fluid. Um, unfortunately, it does not have a drain plug for the torque converter. Usually they do. I know my C6 and 4R70W did, and I'm seeing some AODs with it, but no drain plug, but that's okay, because that's uh, another gallon in itself, and I think I have just enough to do this service, so. Yeah, anyways, I'm gonna get this one back on the ground like I said I was gonna do, and then we'll start filling her up, and uh, wrap this video up. Well, we're gonna go take it for a test drive after this, too. Well, it looks like we took out a gallon and a half. Yeah, that needed to be changed. All right, let's see if you guys don't fall over. We'll try and drive nice. Transmission's full. I just checked it a couple times with it running. It's right at the full mark. So we took out a gallon and a half. I put in a gallon and a half. And so far, it seems to be pretty good. Goes right into reverse. Engine sounds nice and happy with fresh oil. I think everybody needed their oil changed. Oh yeah. 
I think it's shifting a little bit quicker. Just a, a little teeny bit, just in and out of, you know, reverse and whatnot. Let's just take her around the block and check for leaks. I've got, definitely need to get tires. This front right has a, uh, Little weevil wobble. I made some adjustments to the steering. It's, it doesn't pull to the right as much. some food. I haven't eaten at all today. I think it's shifting just a little bit nicer. Just a second. Third. Let's see how it goes into overdrive. My, uh, I have my kit. I have my throttle valve cable adjusted to where it's just, just tugging on it. It is a bit stretched out, so I adjusted it a little bit. So it's, I think it's okay. I just still don't like how this transmission downshifts when I let off the throttle, because I'd just rather just stay in that gear until I get into the throttle. I was getting a shutter in first gear. I think that could have been uh, bad fluid or punches wearing out.
steering alignment done. Transmission is right at the full mark on the cross hatchings. I made a little adjustment to the carburetor, just a, a little touch on the mixture screws. Got to adjust on it once in a while. Cool. That's that, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.